Now, of course, this might seem like a no-brainer. My pelvis hurts after a bike ride because of all the pressure that it's been getting from being on the saddle. Yeah, of course, that's the most sensical reason, right? But why is that? Why, why does my saddle hurt when I ride? It's probably the question that you care about the most when you clicked on this video. Hi there, my name is Nikki Ray Alkima, and I am a third year doctor of physical therapy student and I am also a cyclist. And right now I'm currently in my final rotation of my doctoral program and this rotation happens to be in an outpatient pelvic health center. Pelvic health is a very small niche practice area within physical therapy and we deal with any kind of condition affecting the pelvis and that can be anything relating to basically the core from the diaphragm and down but to be honest with you I have found that pelvic health is relevant to everybody, but especially for those of us who spend a lot of time on the bike saddle. So I wanted to talk to you today about this condition called pudendal neuralgia and why as a cyclist you should be aware of this condition, especially if you've ever experienced pain on the saddle or out of the saddle in your saddle area. Now, if you've spent any number of miles on the bike, you're probably already familiar with nerve compression and what it feels like. You probably get numb fingers sometimes. You probably get some numbness down in your nether regions as well. No matter what your external genitalia is, this can affect all of us. When we talk about pressure, we have an equation which is pressure equals force divided by area. So pressure is the output that we're looking for. Force is our body weight or our mass with gravity, an area is going to be the contact points, the surface area of the contact points between our body weight and the saddle. So if we have in any kind of algebraic equation, a large number in the numerator, so the top number, large number in the numerator divided by a very small number on the bottom, the small denominator, what we're going to get is a really large product, a really large output. So pressure is going to be high if we have a large body weight on a small surface, especially when we're talking about the pelvis, because the pelvis is, you know, that transition point between our upper body and our lower body. Half of our body weight, more or less, is going to be residing on three little contact points within the saddle. Our pubic bone up in front, and our two ischial tuberosities, or our sits bones, on either side of the pelvis, left and right. And again, if you've been cycling for a while, you know exactly what three points on your pelvis I'm talking about without even having to show you a pelvic model. And the reason why this is especially troublesome in the perennial area or the pubic area is because of the pathway of the pudendal nerve itself. And so when you are actually kind of leaned forward, going down into the drops, you're actually pretty much compressing that nerve right there. If you start to experience more severe symptoms such as sharp or shooting pain while you're on the bike or off of the bike even, it could be indicative of a more serious condition called pudendal neuralgia. Now, what does neuralgia mean? Neuralgia basically means pain within a nerve distribution. So, without getting too technical about bony anatomy and whatnot, I just want you to know that your pudendal nerve is the nerve that has a lot of function down there. Pudendal neuralgia um, is when that pudendal nerve is all sorts of pissed off and can create a chronic pelvic pain condition which you really don't want. The pudendal nerve is a three function nerve, which is very unique in the human body. It has sensory function, it has motor function, and it also has autonomic function. In terms of the sensory functions of the pudendal nerve, it innervates the external genitalia of the perineum, no matter what gender you are. So you have three different branches that course out, the inferior rectal nerve, the perineal nerve and the dorsal clitoral or dorsal penile nerve, which is gonna cover all of that external genitalia as far as sensation goes, your touch, okay? 
Then you have motor function as well. So the pudendal nerve innervates the sphincters of the urethra as well as the rectum. So this nerve also contributes motor function to, yes, your bowel and your bladder. Finally, autonomic function, which you might be thinking like, what on earth is autonomic function? I'll just say this, it has sympathetic nervous system function, which means it's not part of your nervous system that you're conscious of happening. It's not a voluntary function that you can control, but it sends signals to your autonomic or your automatic nervous system. And if irritated, this nerve can do some crazy things like make your heart race, give you anxiety, make you sweat, make your pupils dilate, all sorts of stuff because your sympathetic nervous system is essentially your fight or flight function. So this nerve has a lot to do with a lot of things and if it's compressed, it's not gonna be happy. And what makes it even worse is that the pathway of this nerve is such that when it leaves your sacrum, the lower base of your spine, because all of your nerves come out of your spine, when it leaves the lower base of your sacrum through nerve roots S2, 3, and 4, it leaves your pelvis and comes back into your pelvis and travels through a tiny little tendinous fascial canal. So there's just so many ways that this nerve can get tugged on and compressed even before it gets to the area where you're sitting on it. So after it comes out of that tiny little canal called the Alcox Canal or the Pudendal Canal, it actually pierces pretty much right under your sits bones, your ischial tuberosities. So especially if you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of meat on your bones or a lot of fat on your bones, you're actually at higher risk of compressing this nerve because you have less protection of other tissue. So there's a few criteria for diagnosing pudendal neuralgia. One of those things is increased pains with sitting. Another is sharp shooting pains within the sensory distribution of this nerve. It also means not necessarily a change or a diminishment of your sensation. So you might just have sharp shooting pain in your nether regions without any numbness necessarily. Um, so those are some of the things. It can also be diagnosed through a pudendal nerve block, which is something that a physician would have to do. But that is what pudendal neuralgia is. If you're on a long bike ride especially, you need to take pressure brakes. So that means you need to lift your pelvis away from the saddle for an extended period of time before sitting back down. That can be 30 seconds. I mean, ideally it would be longer, but of course on the bike, that's really not gonna happen unless you're stopping for a coffee break or something like that. But lifting your pelvis away from the saddle for a good 20 to 30 seconds if you can, every, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes or so at least, to help relieve compression on this nerve. Make sure that your chamois in your shorts actually does cover all the way to your sit bones and even a little bit outside of your sit bones and your pubic bone in the front. The reason is is that you know chamois are often tend to kind of be cut one size fits all and stuck in different kinds of shorts. Um, even if they do make a larger chamois, they're not always gonna fit your anatomy. So you have to kind of search around and find the brand that actually fits you um, over those bony prominences once you're sitting over in that flex position on the bike. If it's not covering the bony prominences, you're not doing yourself a lot of help and what's the point of wearing the chamois in the first place? Develop awareness. So if you start to experience more severe symptoms such as sharp or shooting pain while you're on the bike or off of the bike even, especially if it's off the bike, um, then you're gonna wanna probably check in with your physician and possibly seek a referral to a pelvic floor physical therapist. 
And part of that recommendation is probably going to be to avoid the offending activity, unfortunately, um, which is the sport that you love. So in order to, you know, prevent ourselves from getting to that point, we do need to demonstrate awareness and start to cultivate good practices while we're on the bike in giving ourselves pressure breaks and making sure that we have good shorts, but also kind of get into the habit of changing your pelvic position while you're on the saddle even between those pressure breaks so rock a little bit back rock a little bit forward so try to you know not hold that static position in one spot for so long where you're allowing yourself to at least expose different areas of your perineum and your pelvis to the saddle a little bit if you can just to offload in those moments between your pedal strokes and between your pressure brakes in order to you know give a little bit of air give a little bit of blood flow and nutrition into that area and to lift up a little bit away from the saddle